Okay, good morning, everyone. Okay, so right now let me uh, do a presentation on listening skill because uh, the course we are doing right now is listening and speaking, okay? And listening and speaking are uh, the two macro skill among the four macro skill in English, okay? So there are four macro skill in English. The first one, listening. The second one, speaking. The third one, writing. And the first one, reading. Okay. Okay. So the course we are doing right now is a listening and speaking skill. Okay. So first of all, I would like to do a presentation on listening skill. And in uh, the second video clip, I'm going to do a presentation on speaking skill. Okay. So right now let's get the ball rolling. Okay, let's start. Okay, listening. Listening, yes, listening. Listening is the most important communication skill. Yes. We probably spend more time using our listening skill than any other kind of skill. Yes. Among the four macro skills, we use listening skill most of the time. Yes. More time. We spend more time on it. We spend more time using the skill, listening skill, yes. Like other skill, listening takes practice. Yes, like uh, uh, other skill, yes. Listening takes practice. The more you practice, the nearer you approach perfection. Perfect, okay. But uh, during your practice, during your practice, you have to have a good guy from someone, okay? From someone who are very, very knowledgeable and very, very skillful in listening skill to help you, okay? So that you can go very fast. Okay, next point, your real listening is an active pro process. Yes, so real listening is an active process. It is not a passive process. You have to be hectic, okay? You must be all your E. You must pay all your attention to it to get a good understanding, yes, about what is speaking about what is uh, spoken about, okay? Yes. And uh, next one is listening require attention, yes. So if you want to be uh, better in listening, you have to pay more attention, okay? Put all your attention into it. Okay, so effective listening. Effective listening is the process of analyzing sounds, organizing them into recognizable patterns, interpreting the patterns and understanding the message by inferring the meaning. Okay. So, yes, if you want to have uh, effective listening or effective listening skill, you have to be able to analyze sound, okay? You have to be able to organize them into uh, recognizable patterns, the pattern that can be understood by you and by the, by the speaker, by the listener, yes. Interpreting the pattern, yes, you can interpret the pattern and understanding the message, and then you can understand the message the meaning of the message. And then you can infer 
Yes. The meaning, what the message is all about. Okay. Many of the problems we experience with people in our daily life are primarily attributable to ineffective listening or lack of listening. Yes. So many of the problem, okay, many of the problem that many people experience, experiencing nowadays uh, caused by uh, the ineffective listening or the lack of listening. Okay, so if you want to be good at listening, you have to be uh, uh, to be. I mean, you have to be uh, enthusiastic about listening. Okay, you have to put all your air, all your ear, be all your ears, and pay all your attention to what you are listening to. Okay. Okay. Listening comes first. The first and foremost communication skill that we learn in our lives is nothing but listening. Yes. So the foremost communication skill is listening. So listening stands first. And then speaking stands second. Reading stand third and writing stand the last, okay? Yes. So, yes, among the four macro skill, yes, listening and reading, we call, uh, product, uh, reading and listening, we call uh, receptive skill, this one, receptive skill. Speaking and writing, productive skill, you see? Because when you speak out, when you write something out, you produce the message, you produce the idea. And when you listen to something, when you read something, you get some idea, we call it subtle skill, okay? Yes. Okay, so right now let's look at the difference between listening and hearing. So listening is not hearing. According to the Amherst College Learning Center, yes, listening and hearing are not the same, yes. So the two staff are not the same, listening and hearing. Hearing is the first stage of listening, yes. So you hear first, yes, and then you listen. If you just hear and then you don't pay attention to it, it's just hearing. But after you hear and then you try to think about the message, you try to think about, to infer the meaning and then it becomes listening, okay? So hearing occurs when our ear pick up sound, okay? Pick up sound waves which are then transported to our brain, okay? So hearing occur when our ears, yes, our ear, pick up the sound waves, yes, uh, which are then transported to our brain. The stage is our sense of hearing. So the stage we call hearing. Listening is a communication process and to be successful is an active process is an active process. In other words, we must be an, act, an active participant in this communication process, okay? So if you want to be successful in your communication, you have to be active in listening, okay? And you have to be an active participant in the process, in communication, yes. In active listening, Meaning and evaluation of a message must take place before a listener can, trans can respond to a speaker. Yes. So in inactive listening, meaning and evaluation of a message must take place. Okay. Must happen. 
Yes. Before a listener can reply back to the speaker. So when the speaker is speaking something, the listener is listening and then try to get the meaning, try to get the message, what the message is all about, and then can respond back to the speaker. This is called active listening. Yes. Therefore, the listener is actively working while the speaker is talking. Yes, you see? So in this process, in the communication process, while the speaker is talking, the listener is actively working and thinking, processing the ideas, processing the message, what the message is all about, okay? Yes. Okay, how can this happen? It is simple. Our thought speed is much faster than our speed speed. So our ability to think is faster than the ability we can faster than the ability we can speak something out. Okay? But be careful. Don't allow the thought speed. I cannot see. Okay. But be careful, don't allow the thought speed to race into the dreaming, okay? So when you are thinking, when you are listening to uh, someone speaking, okay? Don't let your thought speed up. Don't let your thought speed up to become daydreaming. Okay, yes. This habit will defeat our attempt to become an, an active listener. Okay, so when you let this become your habit, I mean, you always uh, fall asleep when you listen to somebody or when you listen to something, and then it becomes your habit. And at the time, you are not an active listener. Okay. It is a bad habit. It's gonna spoil your listening, okay? Yes. Okay, basic communication skill profile. Okay, you can see here, communication, you have listening, speaking, reading, and writing. Okay, so order, learn. So you have to learn listen, listening first, speaking second, reading third, and writing fourth. Extend use. We use listening, yes, first, yes. Extend, yes. Speaking second, reading third, and writing fourth. And extend thought, yes. So writing become first, Reading becomes second, speaking becomes third, and listening becomes fourth. Okay? Taught, extant taught. Okay? Yes. Because here, why? Why it becomes like this? Because uh, when you learn, yes, when somebody teach you, yes, he or she will teach you how to write first. Okay, focus on writing, yes. Most of, much of, I mean, uh, most of the time they focus on writing, okay, yes. Okay, fallacy about listening. Fallacy means wrong belief. So fallacy about listening. Listening is not my problem. 
Okay. If you think listening is not your problem, it is a fallacy, it is a wrong belief. Okay. So, uh, how good you are, how good you are at listening is dependent on yourself. So you, the one who decide your listening skill, okay? So if you want to be good at listening, you have to practice. You have to observe the native speaker. You have to improve your pronunciation because when you can speak it, you can listen to it, okay? Yes. The second point, the second fallacy, listening and hearing are the same. They are different. So it is a fallacy. <laughs> listening is different from hearing. Hearing, it means when you hear, just pick up the sound from the outside source. And then it transfer the sound to your brain. In this state, we call hearing. But listening, it means you have to pay attention to something you are listening to, okay? You have to pay attention. You have to be all your ears, okay? Yes, good readers are good listener. Yes, it is another fallacy. Good readers are good listener, okay? So sometimes, some people can read fluently in a very, very fast manner but they are bad at listening. Why? Because they do not have good pronunciation. You just read it fluently, but the pronunciation is very limited. So when they listen to the native speaker or when they do the test about, I mean, in listening skill, they will be poor. Their mark will be low. Their point will be, will be low. Because they cannot listen to the native speaker. Because the way they speak different from the way the native speak. The way they read different from the way the native speaker read. You see? Yes. So it is a fallacy. So if you want to improve your listening skill, if you want to be good listener, you have to practice. Listen. You have to practice your listening skill. Okay? You have to improve your pronunciation. Okay. Smarter people are better listener. No, no. Being smart different from being good at listening. Some people are smart, but they are not good at listening at all. Okay, because they are poor pronunciation. They have poor pronunciation. Yes. Okay. So if you want to be good at listening, you have to practice. You have uh, to be able to pronounce like the native speaker pronounce thing or stuff, yes. So that when the native speaker say something or speaking about something, you can understand the meaning and even every single word the native speaker use, yes. Listening, another fallacy, Listening improve with age, no. Listening does not improve with age. How skillful you are, it depends on your practice. Okay? It depends on your enthusiasm. Okay? And it depends on uh, 
the motivation factor. Okay. Yes. And another fallacy, listening skills are difficult to learn. Some people think that listening skills are difficult to learn. No, no. If you have enough enthusiasm, if you have enough motivation to improve listening skill, if you have good teacher or professor guiding you in this skill, and the professor and the teacher are very, very skillful in listening, you will be a good listener. Okay, so this is the fallacy. Okay, so right now look at the objectives of listening. Okay, the first objective is to learn. Yes, you have to learn, you have to know how to have a good listening skill. Okay. The second objective to increase one understanding. Okay. The better the better you become a good listener. Yes. The more understanding you will get. Yes. To advise the third objective is to advise or counsel. Yes. If you are good at listening, you can listen to uh, anyone's uh, problem. Yes. So you can give advice or you can give counsel to them. Okay. Yes. And uh, the first one to relieve one boredom. Okay, so the last objective is to relieve one boredom, to reduce one boredom by listening to, for example, music. Yes, make you happy. Okay, it can blow you away. And when you come back, you become fresh and you can and then you can do something new or you can continue what you are uh, left behind. Okay. You can continue doing what you have uh, left behind during your listening to music. Okay. Yes. Okay, next slide. Research findings. Okay, research finding. One quarter of our waking time is spent in listening. Okay, one quarter. One quarter of our waking time is spent in listening. Okay. Yes. Research show that at the workplace, on an average, personnel spend about thirty-two point seven percent of their time listening. Twenty-five point eight percent of their time speaking. Twenty-two point six percent of their time writing. You see, the percentage here show that. Uh, during waking time, people spend most of the time in listening. Okay, you see? Yes. Effective listening is the most crucial skill for becoming a successful manager. Yes, sure. If you are good at listening, you can understand everyone's situation. Yes. 
and then you can have them. And then you will become more popular. Yes. And if you are a manager, you're going to be a successful manager because everyone loves you because you can listen to them. Okay. Yes. It requires paying attention, interpreting, interpreting, and remembering sound stimuli. So effective listening requires paying attention, interpreting, yes, and remembering sound stimuli. Yes. Okay, sound stimuli mean something that leads to such a sound. Why? Why it is sound like this? Why? Why it is sound like that? So you can remember. Okay. And then you, when you can listen to everyone, you understand them. When you make decision, you know, it must be a great decision. Yes. Because you get all involved in your decision making. You listen to the idea, you listen to them. Yes. Okay, important of listening. Communication is not complete without effective listening. Okay, so a good communication, effective communication is not complete without effective listening. So in order to make communication effective or fruitful, the partner's interlocutor in the communication must be effective, must be active in listening, okay? Yes, an attentive listener stimulate better speaking by the speaker. Yes, an attentive listener stimulates better speaking by the speaker. Yes. I mean, the more you put attention to listening, the better the speaker can speak. Because the speaker think that what they are talking about or speaking about very important. And the listener is listening attentively. You see? So one depends on the other, listening and speaking. A good listener learn more than an indifferent listener. Yes, sure. If you are a good listener, if you are an active listener, if you are an effective listener, you're going to learn more than someone who pay no attention to what they are listening to. Okay, so indifferent here means ignore. Do not pay attention. Yes. A good listener can restructure wake speaking in a way that produces clearer meaning. Yes. So here it means that a good listener can understand no matter
no matter how good or how bad the speaker can speak. Okay, so a good listener can synthesize and can wrap up everything and then come up with a good understanding. Even though the speaker use bad structure, yes. Even though the speaker cannot find the word uh, very, very fit the, to the situation, but the, a good listener, the listener can understand. Yes. A good listener learn to detect prejudices, assumption, and attitude. Okay. So being a good listener, you can learn about uh, the speaker prejudices, the speaker assumption, and the speaker attitude. Okay. When a speaker use such words, the listener can predict or can know that the speaker have negative or positive attitude towards something. Yes. Yes, this is the meaning. Okay, so right now, come to real listening. Real listening has three basic steps. Hearing. Hearing just mean listening enough to catch what the speaker is saying. For example, say you were listening to a report on zebras and the speaker mentioned that no two are alike. If you can repeat the fact, then you have heard what has been said. Okay, the second step, understanding. The next part of listening happens when you take what you have heard and understand it in your own way. Let's go back to that report on Zebra. When you hear that no two are alike, think about what that might mean you might think maybe this means that the pattern of stripe is different from each zebra. Judging, the third step. After you are sure that you have understood what the speaker has said, think about whether it makes sense. Do you believe what you have heard? You might think, how could the strap be different for every zebra? But then again, the fingerprints are different for every person. I think this seems believable. Yes. You see? So first of all, you, when you can just repeat what somebody has said, it just the first stage we call listening or hearing only okay it is the first stage and then the second stage you can understand what the speaker want to infer the meaning yes you understand And then the third step, you can judge. 
whether you think like what you have done in understanding correct or not correct right or wrong this time you judge okay so if you if we can say it another way hearing is just concrete you can repeat what somebody have just said okay you can repeat what you can listen to and then understanding is some like uh, subtract thing okay you can uh, in this stage you develop a critical and uh, critical thinking yeah the second stage and then the third stage or the third step you can judge whether it is right or wrong okay yes okay active listening process step so first of all first of all hearing the second one filtering you know filter okay. comprehending you get understanding and then remembering you can remember it and then you can respond to it okay so these are the step in active listening process okay so right now let's go to each one one by one hearing hearing is the first essential step in the listening process and relates to the sensory perception of sound okay when you perceive sound the listener further processes the perceived sound for learning to be effective hearing needs to be done with attentiveness and concentration okay to have a better hearing you have to put more attention and more concentration into something okay yes and then filtering filtering is the next step okay that involves sensing and filtering of heart, of heard sound. So you just pick up the important sound only. Okay. The heard message is categorized as wanted or unwanted. Yes. The unwanted message is discarded. You throw it away. Unwanted message. The sense of judgment of the individual comes into play. That is, the filtering process is subjective. And then it becomes subjective. If you think it is important, this point is important, you just pick it up. If you think that point is not important, you discard it, you throw it away. Okay? Leave it behind. Okay. And the person chooses to retain what makes sense to him. And then a person just to remember, to retain, to retake what makes sense to him only. This is called filtering. Okay, the third step, comprehending. The listener understand what the speaker has tried to convey, yes? Convey, the, it means convey the meaning, yes. This activity can be described as absorbing. You absorb through your throat jaw, nah? grasping, chabam, chap job, or assimilating. Do you go? Assimilate means it for always being. Do you go? You get that? Avoid that. Nhưng cần thật sống khánh kì như vậy thì mới kì thư dặn mấy cư dân phư tam kì dân dạy tam kì nó Anh đang assimilating, grasping nặng nó The listener use, uses his knowledge, experience, perception and cognitive power Yes So in this stage, the listener use his knowledge, experience, perception and cognitive power Yes, the listener use all of this stuff 
and then try to get the meaning from what the speaker is talking about. Okay. Yes. And then remember it. The assimilating message is stored in memory to facilitate future record. Okay. So in this stage, the assimilating message, the grasping, the grasp, the grasp message, the absorb message is stored in a memory to facilitate future record. We call schemata here. Schemata. We put the information here. It located here. It located here. At the back of your brain. Okay. Yes, we call schema or schemata. For your future use. For your future recall. Yes. Responding, responding to a message takes place at the end of the communication. Yes. So when you hear something, okay, and you try to comprehend it, and then you try to remember it, and then you respond, respond to the speaker. What do you think about this stuff? What do you think about this idea? You agree or not, you respond back to the speaker. Yes. Immediately after or later, to show that the message is being received and comprehended. Yes. To show that the message is being received and comprehended. or not. So you have to respond so that the speaker uh, know that you receive, you comprehend the message or not. Okay, how much you understand uh, about the message? Okay, yes. Okay, so here we have type of listening. Okay. Here we come to type of listening. We have many type of listening. The first one we call discriminative listening. It involves identifying the difference between various sounds. Yes. It also enables one to differentiate between familiar and unfamiliar language. Okay. This is the first one. The second one, comprehension listening. It involves attaching meaning to what is being listened to. It may also include comprehending the nonverbal messages being conveyed by the speaker. Yes. So in this time, you have to listen to understand the meaning of the word and the word in the context. On top of that, you have to be able to understand the nonverbal messages. It can be the body uh, language, Example, the speaker use, okay? Yes. And then another one, another tab, evaluative listening. It involves evaluating and analyzing the message being received, okay? In this tab, during your listening, you have to analyze the message, yes. You have to evaluate the message. It involves judging the acceptability of what is said depending on how logical one finds it to be. Yes. And in this type of listening, you have to decide whether the message is believable or not. You believe in 
the words or the meaning of the message or not. Okay. Another one, attentive listening, it involves paying attention to the words that are being spoken. So attentive listening, it means the listener have to pay attention to the words that the speaker use. Okay, pretend listening. It involves one hearing. It involves more hearing than listening. You just pretend to listen. Okay, it means pretending through facial expression that one is listening when actually, when actually one is not. Yes. Another one, selective listening, it involves selecting the desired part of the message and ignoring the undesired part of the message. So you select which one you want to know about. You just listen to that part. And the part that you are not interested in, you leave it behind. You don't pay attention to it. Okay, another one is intuitive listening. It means, it means listening through the intuitive mind by silencing the other forms of internal dialogues going on simultaneously. Okay, so in this type, during you listen to, uh, during your listening, yes, you also listen to the intu intuitive Nice. Intuition. We can say intuition. You during uh, you listening to something, or during your listening, yes, you also pay attention to the uh, intuition of the speaker simultaneously. Yes. Okay, barrier to effective listening, yes. The first barrier, it can be physical barriers. Okay, physical barrier. The second one, it can be people related to barrier, physiological barrier, psychological barrier, Okay, yes, physical barrier, people-related barrier. Okay, so right now let's go into uh, deeper, yes, one by one. Okay, physical barrier we have here. Physical barrier, it can be noise, poor costing, just noise, you know, for example, uh, you are learning in the class and during uh, the explanation by the teacher, there are many noises coming in and then you cannot listen to the teacher clearly. So it is a barrier to your listening. Another one, poor acoustic. Acoustic means the sound wave. It can be uh, it can be the medium like the telephone, like telegram, like messenger. Yes. If you have a poor quality microphone, and when the speaker speaking about something. Uh, it cannot transfer the sound in good quality to your ear. And then you cannot listen clearly. And then you cannot hear clearly what the speaker is speaking about or talking about. So it is a barrier as well. Another one, defective mechanical devices. Defective is opposite from effective. Defective 
defective opposite from effective so defective mechanical devices okay so here it related to the devices like in this day yes many people use for example modern devices like iphone samsung uh, lg for example and then the people can communicate smoothly effectively but if they do not have enough money to buy modern stuff like this they will buy uh, the poor quality one, like the phone from, I don't know, but they are very, very poor in quarry. And then it's hard for the interlocutor or it's going to be hard for you to, to use those poor quarry stuff to communicate with the others. Okay. And then another one, frequent interruption, okay? So during your communication, when there are something interrupting you or interrupting the process, and then it's gonna be hard for you to listen to each other and to understand each other. And then it is a barrier as well for your communication. For example, when you are talking on phone with your friend and then your brother or your sister always ask the question during the process and then it interrupts you, okay? So it is a barrier as well. Uncomfortable sitting arrangement. Okay, so this one, if we talk about teaching methodology, yes, in the class, the teacher uh, have to arrange the student in a way that all the students can learn equally, okay? And when the teacher or the professor uh, teaching, the student from every corner of the class can hear. Otherwise, it is not a good sitting arrangement okay yes uncomfortable environment so if you are in an environment that is very smelly or which is very i mean too hot or too cold and then it's gonna be hard for you to communicate with each other so uncomfortable environment is a barrier as well in your communication. Message overload, okay? Too much message. So it will make you confused in the listening process. This, that, those, this, those, that. May, may, many, many stuff, yes. So it's a barrier to listening as well. Okay, so right now we come to physiological barrier. Yes. Because uh, the first one, physical barrier here, yeah, physical barrier. Now, the barrier related to people, like physiological barrier, yes, psychological barrier. So right now we come to this one, physiological barrier. A physiological barrier can be state of health. State of health of the listener and the speaker affect the listening ability. Favor, pain, or any other form of bodily discomfort make it difficult for a person to listen or speak 
comfortably. Comfortably. Yes, sure. If your health is bad, is in bad condition, you will have no feeling in uh, listening to something, right? Yes. So it is a barrier. Disability, hearing deficiency may lead to poor listening. Similarly, speech disorders of the speaker may make a speak in current to the listener. Speaker action may also make it difficult for the listener to comprehend. Yes, so disability, hearing deficiency may lead to poor listening. Similarly, speech disorder of the speaker. You see disorder speech. Speech disorder of the speaker may make a speech incoherent to the listener. And then the listener will not pay attention to that. Okay? Because the listener think it is incoherent. It is very confusing. Okay? I cannot understand you. So I don't need to pay attention to what you are speaking about. Okay? Speaker action may also make it difficult for the listener to comprehend as well. Like the North British, the way they use action is different from the way uh, the American in the South use. Okay. For example, the different action. You are very beautiful, for example. Okay. But for those who live in the north of uh, Britain or Britain, they will say, You are very beautiful. You are very beautiful. Yeah? You are very beautiful. But they say, you are very beautiful. You see, different actions sometimes is hard for the listener to understand. Okay, for example, another example. Some Vietnamese say, you are very rude. while we are saying you are very good. Cambodian people say you are very good, but Vietnamese say you are very good. Okay, different action. Okay, wandering attention, wandering, jump around, wandering. Zigzag attention, yes. Human mind can possess words at the rate of about 500 per minute. Whereas a speaker speak at the rate of about 150 per minute. Okay, so the speaker can speak 150 words out per minute while the mind can process, human mind can process. 500 words per minute, you see? The difference between the two leaves the listener with sufficient time to let his mind wander. Okay? So when the listener feel that, oh, I can understand it, just hear only 150 words, okay? Here, it means the mind can process more word than the speaker can speak the word out. Okay? So it gives the listener some time to think about something else. Yes. Okay. Another one is psychological barrier. 
yes, being unsure of the speaker ability. Based on past experience or input from sources, the listener may have a preconceived notion of the speaker ability. He may perceive the speaker to not be well informed or to be lacking in depth and ability, and the listener will not listen to what the speaker has to say. Okay, so here's I mean that if the listener do not, if the listener does not believe in the speaker ability, for example, uh, if the audience, the listener, do not believe in the presenter ability, and the listener know that the presenter is not well prepared, okay and the presenter lack uh, lack understanding about the topic. And then the listener will not pay attention to the presenter. Okay, yes. Another one, personal anxiety. Sometimes the listener is preoccupied with personal concern and anxiety, yes. So when the listener is preoccupied, when the listener is overwhelmed by personal concern, personal problem, so the listener do not pay attention to the speaker. This makes it difficult to perceive what is being said by the speaker, yes? Because the listener do not pay attention to the speaker because they're having their own problem they are having their own concern and anxiety. Yes. Another one, attitude. Yes, attitude. The listener may be highly egocentric with a know-it-all attitude and may not listen as he feels that he already know what the listener has to say, what the speaker has to say. Yes. For example, some people have uh, we call egocentric idea, egocentric idea. I mean, when they are uh, egocentric, they think that they know everything or they know clearly about what the speaker is talking about. So they pay no attention. Okay, yes, this is attitude, the feeling. Okay, another one about psychological barrier is impatient. The listener may not have patience to wait for the other person to finish what he has to say. He may be intolerant or may be eager to add his own points to the discussion. As a result, he desires to speak overcome his desire to listen, thus acting as a barrier. Okay, so this one is about impatience. The listener cannot have listening to the speaker. The listener wants to add his own point to the discussion. Okay. So at the time the listener is preparing himself to add something, to say something out more. Okay. So what the speaker is talking about is left behind, is ignored by the listener. Yes. Okay, another one is emotional block. Our deep-seated belief in certain idea may make it difficult for us to listen to idea which go against our belief. Yes. So if you know that what the speaker is talking about is again your belief, and then you, the listener, will not pay attention to that. 
because you think it's not important. It is a bullshit. Yes. We may hear such an idea wrongly or it may get distorted in our mind to match our perception or we may completely block it off by not listening to it. So you block it off. You don't listen to it anymore. Many a time we block something off completely because of painful memory associated with it. Okay, so if you continue hearing or continue listening to uh, the speaker, and then it's gonna hurt because uh, of the memory associated with it. Okay, so right now, go to tip for being a good listener. If you want to be a good listener, you have to follow this tip. You have to practice these tips. Give your full attention on the person who is speaking. Yes, you have to give full, full attention. Don't look out the window or at what else is going on in the room. Yes, make sure your mind is focused. Focused. You see, make sure your mind is focused. It can be easy to let your mind wander if you think you know what the person is going to say next. But you might be wrong. If you feel your mind wandering, change the position of your body and try to concentrate on the speaker's words. Yes. The third tip, let the speaker finish before you begin to talk. Speakers appreciate having the chance to say everything they would like to say without being interrupted. When you interrupt, it looks like you end listening, even if you really are. Okay, next tip. Let yourself finish listening before you begin to speak. You can't really listen if you are busy thinking about what you want to say next. Listen for main idea. The main ideas are the most important point the speaker wants to get across. They may be mentioned at the start or end of a talk and repeat it a number of times. Pay special attention to statement that begin with phrases such as, my point is blah, 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 or the thing to remember is blah, 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 Okay, another tip, ask question. If you are not sure you understood what the speaker has said, just ask. For example, you might say, when you said that no two zebra are alike, did you mean that the stripes are different on each one? Okay, another tip, give it back. Sit up straight and look directly at the speaker. Now and then, not to show that you understand. At appropriate points, you may also smile, frown, laugh, or be silent. These are the ways to let the speaker know that you are really listening. Remember, you listen with your face as well as your ears. Okay, bibliography. Book Business English, Pearson uh, Education, Department of English, University of Delhi, yes. Book of Professor Minashi Gupta, Department of Humanities and Social Sciences, Indian Institute of Technology, Hawaii, Mumbai. Internet website, yes. Okay, thank you. Yes, so right now it's come to an end. And thank you so much for your attention and your enthusiasm in learning. Yes. And if you have questions, you can ask. Yes. Through group Telegram or through my phone number. Okay. Give me a ring and then we can discuss. Okay. Thank you. And the next video, I will do a presentation about speaking skill. Okay, yes, thank you.